According to a CBN news report, Ukrainians are telling stories of divine intervention as the Russian invasion continues. These reports are in line with a prophetic word I released just before war broke out in Europe, urging intercessors to pray. God said he would show up and show out, and so he is. This is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Praying the News. On today's episode, we're going to report on some of the miracles happening in Ukraine and let the prophetic word I released on the eve of war encourage us to continue the good fight of faith. Stay tuned for Praying the News. This is Jennifer LeClaire, former editor of Charisma magazine and a former journalist for major news outlets all over the world. I've been producing news for over 30 years. Now, God is leading me to pray the news as we go deeper into the end times. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I'll be curating headlines, sharing a prophetic perspective on the news and praying. From world news to health and science to technology and entertainment and beyond, I'll share news that matters most in the moment, and I'll do it through a prophetic lens. You'll be equipped to be a prophetic solutionist. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and subscribe now on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out more at awakeningpodcasts.com. Thanks for joining me today. I want to roll this audio from CBN News and a couple of other sources with dramatic accounts of God showing up for the united Ukraines. But first, I want to read you a scripture. It's a familiar verse, but one that, prophetically speaking, I believe is part of the reason why Russia has not crushed Ukraine with its vast army. Psalm 133 reads, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. There is a power in unity that attracts God. And remember, President Zelensky is Jewish, one of only two Jewish heads of state in the world. It seems like Esther, he was called for such a time as this. I believe Zelensky understands this psalm, and he understands the history of Israel. I believe he has faith in divine interventions, even this week reminding the world that God is in control. Zelensky stated, instead of forgiveness, there will be judgment. I agree with Zelensky. I heard the Lord say, Putin will pay. Now let's listen to this prophecy I previously released. And when we come back, we'll look at how that prophetic word is manifesting and where we go from here. For the Lord would say tonight, I have indeed called Ukraine to rise up and fight for what I've called them to contend for and against whom I've called them to contend with. And I will work a miracle in that nation. I will show up strong for them in this hour. I will not allow the enemy to have his way as the intercessors pray. I will use your prayers to push back the darkness, to dismantle the weapons of Russian armies. Armies that are being organized even now with the intent of mass destruction. I will use your prayers. I will use your prayers. So keep on praying, says the Lord, for I have a future and a hope for Ukraine. And you will see my glory. You will see me show up and show out, says the Lord, for I have marked the Ukraine for a great awakening. And this today, tonight, is part of my plan to awaken the prophets of Ukraine to awaken the intercessors who will stand up and take their authority. No more fear. No more shame. Oh, Jesus, help us tonight to agree with your leadership. Could you fall for the great end times deception? The truth is, if you don't think you can be deceived, you already are. Satan has been deceiving people since the Garden of Eden. The Bible tells us plainly, Do not be deceived. And you cannot read a single book in the New Testament that doesn't offer a warning about deception. 
as we go deeper into the end times, the deception is rising rapidly. There's false doctrines, false prophets, false teachers, false apostles, false pastors, false believers, false deliverance ministers, false anointings, false signs and wonders, and more. Here's the scary part. Not only can anyone be deceived, many who call themselves Christians are already deceived, and some are deceiving others. The good news is you can escape the great end times deception if you know what to expect and how to guard against it. In this course, I will expose end times deceptions and arm you with the truth that serves as a shield against what's already happening and what's soon coming. Get equipped to escape the end times deception at schoolofthespirit.tv slash deception. That was an amazing word of the Lord. Now look at how God is moving. Here's some audio from CBN News. You've got to listen to this. How have you seen God intervene on behalf of the Ukrainian people? What do you know? What can you share? Well, I, I can share that one, uh, uh, one brother share, shared uh, an audio from, uh, from a brother from the church. So he says that his son, uh, he's a part of the military. And uh, he was saying that uh, that they were like uh, dark in the dark night. They were they were holding their positions, and they've discovered that uh, that a lot of uh, Russian Federation tanks and uh, and machines coming at them, and they they might struggle defending themselves. And uh, he he picks up his phone and he calls his father. He says, "Dad, you have to pray right now." We in the situation. So if his father, uh, he rings to other members of the church, they start praying. And then later son gives a phone call and he says, there's some miracle happened. It looked like some spaceship, sh like there was like an attack from the spaceship. There was some kind of a lightning was starting shooting from the sky and, and like sparks were going were like spreading everywhere. And then they, on the morning, they've discovered that the whole, the whole machinery was destroyed. So they like, all of those soldiers, they, they thought maybe it was done by some kind of a weapon that we didn't know about, or it was just God's intervention. Wow. So, and the, there was another occasion that we just got from, from our friend that we know person in person, we were praying that they would, start resisting each other that enemy would resist the enemy because we know in uh, there were several biblical occasions like this you know that when god was doing this and another another part of the russian army they they occupied one little town and they they've removed flags from the from the town's uh, government buildings they they uh, attached those flags to their tanks and they started to ride and Eventually, at the at the dark in the evening, they met the first group of the tanks, and so they they thought they are enemies to each other, and they started shooting into each other. If this is not enough, consider the report from One for Israel Ministry. We'll hear from Pastor Ivan from Ukraine. Listen in. Uh, have you heard any testimonies of these miracles on the battlefield? I mean. I would say everyone's thinking it's a miracle that Kiev is still standing and it's a miracle that they've stalemated the one of the strongest armies in the world uh with the surprise attack. So, do you have any examples to share? Uh yes. Uh some some of us are praying for uh for the Russian army to have fear like in the times of Old Testament. Mm, amen. And that happened a few times when uh, some Russians would surrender and uh, then they would share that at a certain moment they would experience supernatural fear that could not be explained by anything. Wow. And at the same time, God gives uh, courage to some mm. unarmed Ukrainians who literally try to stop tanks with their bare hands, you know, just standing on the highway and trying to block wow. road just by standing there. <laughs> and uh, there were cases when, you know, tanks would stop. Yeah. 
Wow. Oh my god. So um because uh I don't know uh it can be explained by other reasons. I explained that there is a spiritual realm for that for sure. Is that Amen. only spiritual realm or is that uh spiritual realm plus something else that is difficult to answer mm. yet, but some of the Russians surrender because because of those things too, you know, they just saw hey, uh doesn't work. Uh wow. Some very dangerous uh, Russian troops uh, that some people are scared of denied. Uh, I mean, they re- they didn't want to come here. They refuted. Mm. You know, they said, "No, we are not coming to Ukraine. We do not want to come to Ukraine." Wow, and that's a bold disobeying thing. disobeying the order, by, so, by the way. But I think it's okay to disobey illegal order. Wow, these are just a few of the testimonies of what God is doing in Ukraine. I know there's been bloodshed. I know there's been lives lost, but God is moving and God will bring justice. I'll be back with some prayer points right after this. In 2007, the Holy Spirit woke me up in the middle of the night and told me he would bring a third great awakening to the nation. I believe we're going to see the greatest great awakening in the history of the world and it will spill over into the nations of the earth for the glory of God. I believe we'll see a movement greater than all previous moves of God put together. And I know it's predicated on prayer. The Awakening Prayer Hub's mission in any city is to draw a diverse group of intercessors who have one thing in common, to contend for the Lord's will in its city, state, and nation. Bishop Bill Hammond, Lou Engel, Cindy Jacobs, Mike Bickle, James Gall, Alveda King, and many others are standing with us. Will you start a hub or find a hub in your city at awakeningprayerhubs.com? So how do we pray now? Well, I believe we need to wage war with the prophetic word that you listened to earlier in this broadcast. Listen to it. Continue to contend with the prophecy. Beyond that, pray for an end to the conflict. Pray for divine protection over Ukraine. Pray for the courage of Ukrainian resistance. They've been so courageous. Pray that God will continue to fight for Ukraine. Pray for Ukraine to see justice in this unprovoked war. Pray that the war on Ukraine does not escalate to World War III. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. Share this with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed. God bless you.